Nine years after the release of Crackdown 2, Crackdown 3 has finally been released. Today, we focus on the game's story campaign, a sandbox filled with mayhem and destruction that, at times, can feel a little dated. The Crackdown 3 campaign begins after a powerful and devastating blackout attack hits hundreds of cities. Survivors of these attacks took refuge in a city controlled by Terra Nova, led by Elizabeth Neman, Terra Nova's CEO. The city looked like a paradise, but survivors soon realized that things were not as they seemed, with the Iron Fist of Terra Nova ruling over them. That's where you, a wrecking ball of the agency, come into play. Tasked with freeing the people of the city from Terra Nova's grasp, you, a superpowered agent who, with the help of a character called Echo, survived the deadly crash. Joined by the agency's director Goodwin over communication, you set off on a path of destruction. Players have a bunch of agents to choose from, but let's just face it, everybody's going to play with Agent Jackson, who's modeled after Terry Crews. Crackdown 3 takes a decent shot at bringing more story to the destruction, with several lieutenants that you have to dispatch of. From a crazy AR, which you can see us battling right now, to a mad scientist, all while you're trying to make your way to the final showdown. These characters with their cheesy lines are somewhat entertaining, but the story as a whole revolves around shooting your way through everything and it feels mediocre at best with nothing special to remember. It is light-hearted and when you throw some comedic one-liners from Terry Crews and some rants over communication systems from director Goodwin, it is enough considering what it is. What Crackdown 3 is, is basically a relatively fun shoot 'em up or maybe we should rather say blow em up game with a gameplay loop that feels like something pulled out of the previous generations. Basically, you run around to points marked on the map, kill all the enemies there and then run to the next point. From refineries to prison entertainment facilities and the odd missile launcher and more. You have to destroy all the enemies while sometimes performing tasks such as throwing rocks into a machine or hacking a terminal by pressing just a few buttons. The thing is, you have to complete these objectives that are basically the same thing maybe 5, 8 or even 12 times all to unlock enough intel to get to a lieutenant. The Crackdown 3 campaign then feels very repetitive, much like you would find in a Saints Row title. However, boss fights do mix things up a little bit, as every boss has their own unique mechanic that you need to take care of. This all just boils down to shooting a specific target first or switching targets when something happens. For example, Gmon Kaita is the boss of the processing facility and to defeat him in his massive mech you need to shoot a core when he goes off to replenish his health. After each boss fight or even when completing certain objectives, you also get treated to a cinematic showing your progress in the story so far. Now that's a crater. It there are 24 guns and a bunch of grenades in the game that all feel pretty powerful. From a grenade launcher to an arc rifle to your standard rifles, sniper rifles, plasma rifles and a shotgun. You can carry three weapons at a time and our favorite combination was that of an arc rifle combined with a grenade launcher and a devastating pulse beam which sets enemies on fire and cuts through them like nothing else does. So how do you power up your agent even more? Well, there's a few ways to increase your character power. The first and most obvious one is by simply completing objectives, with some of the objectives being fun like taking out a base of operations. Others, however, feel so dated such as climbing to the top of a propaganda tower and destroying it, driving over enemies to increase your driving skill, or finding small pieces of intel in the world. Then you get orbs scattered by the hundreds throughout the city. Agility orbs are your bread and butter, allowing you to access more movement skills. However, these are just out there in the open, on almost every roof and everywhere else. It almost felt like a troll picking up these orbs everywhere, and to make matters worse, the best way to increase your character power is by finding the hidden orbs. These orbs are fewer in number, and they are either in hard to reach places or tucked away somewhere secret. Crackdown 3 was supposed to be a big hitter for Xbox One and Windows 10 gaming, a revolutionary showcase of mayhem and destruction. The campaign, however, is nothing more or less than mediocre. The story is a bit cheesy and the highly repetitive gameplay loop doesn't do wonders either. 
Even with its flaws, the one-liners from characters are great, the moment-to-moment -moment gunplay is fun, and boss fights break up the repetitive gameplay loop quite a bit. With some excellent performance and lovely cell shaded graphics, the game simply feels fun to play in short bursts. Crackdown 3 isn't going to win any Game of the Year awards, and with its dated mechanics, you might take several breaks through its campaign, which lasted us up to 14 hours clearing most of the map. In the end, Crackdown 3's campaign is a bit of a disappointment, but it is also a Terry Crews simulator with a ton of explosions, so it isn't all that bad. For that, we score Crackdown 3's campaign a 6.8 out of 10. Can I trust you?